Hey there, it's Ella from Spline. In today's video, as we promised you in the past, we'll show you how to bring this character to life by making it walk. First, we'll create a basic animated loop using states and events, and then we're going to make it even more interactive by combining it with game controls so that your character walks every time you use your mouse or keyboard. And you might be surprised by just how easy it is to do this. All right, let's get started. To animate in Spline, we first need to understand states and events. When you select an object and then add a new state to it, you can adjust the various properties of that object. Then these changes will only be reflected in that new state and not in the base state. In the new state, I'll change the size and rotation of this object. And then by toggling between the two states, you can see what I mean. And this is how we can apply different movements, transformations, and transitions to our objects within our scene. You can keep applying more states to create even more complex movements or transformations. But how do we go from one state to the next? For that, we need to use events. You can think of events as triggers. They will trigger the transition between base state to state one, state two, state three, and so on. And there are many different events to choose from in Spline, and some don't even need a state change to create movement for an object. In a walking animation, there are several key poses, but the most essential for our current example would be the contact position with the feet as they touch the ground and how the leg rotates back and forth. Now let's start with a simple example by recreating the walking cycle. For example, with this leg in the animation that I want to create, I need to move the pivot point up to the top of the leg like this. When it comes to adjusting the pivot point, what we need to do is select the object that we want to change the pivot position for. Then we're going to group the object by pressing Command G or Control G for Windows. And on the left side, select the parent of the group by holding Option or Alt on Windows and clicking the group layer. Now use the gizmo to move the access position of the pivot point. In this case, we want to move our pivot point up to the hip of our character. This is where we want our leg to turn from. Here I have my base or contact pose, where the foot is simply resting on the ground. Now let's add a new state and I'll adjust the rotation by moving the leg forward. I'll rename this state to front to make it easier to identify. Finally, I'll create another state, but this time adjust the rotation of the leg backwards. And I'll name this state back. Now, as you can see, I have three different positions for our right leg. One rotated forward, one rotated backwards, and one as the standing pose. Now, let's quickly do the same thing for the left leg. Now, how do we animate it? Let's try using a start event. First, we'll start with the right leg, and then we'll create a new start event. Create a new transition. In the target, I have my right leg selected, and in the transition, I'll add my states. I'll start with the back pose, then move into the base state, and finally the front pose. I'll set the timing to 0 0.25. and then select the linear option here. Do 
To keep it looping, I'll choose infinite. And cycle ping pong. Now let's see how it looks. All right, pretty cool. Now for the left leg. Since the animation is the same, we can simply copy and paste this transition. Just make sure that you've adjusted the pivot point at the top of the leg so it works correctly. Then in target, select the left leg. If I hit play right now, you'll see that both legs are animated, but it looks a little strange because they're moving at the same pace when they should be opposite. When the left leg moves forward, the right leg should move back and vice versa. To fix this, all we need to do is adjust the states. If I started with the back pose for the right leg, I'll start with the front pose for the left leg. And here, instead of the front, I'll switch it to back. This way, the order of poses between the left and right legs is different, making the animation look much more natural. You can add an arm animation, which should move opposite to the legs. If the right leg is moving back, the right arm should be moving forward. Once everything is combined, you'll have a nice looping walk cycle like this. Let's add some more personality by giving the character a bit of a bounce. Simply select the character's body and create a second state, then slightly adjust the position downward. You can also tweak the scale a bit to give this impression that the character is shrinking, which works really well for this circle character. Now create a start event, a new transition, and this time I'll set it to ease in out with the timing of 0.25. And once again, select infinite loop in ping pong cycle. To give your character more personality, try adding extra events and micro animations. For instance, you can make their eyes follow the action with a look at event. Or you might animate other elements like giving the hat a little bit of a wiggle or bounce. You can also place your character against a moving background to enhance the feeling of motion or add some camera movements for an extra effect. It's the little details that really bring characters to life. Now let's see how we can add to our character by using game controls. This will make it so that when someone interacts with our character, whether by using keyboard keys or clicking with a mouse, the character not only moves but also simulates a walking motion or taking steps. The first step is to create the states by adjusting the rotation for each leg and arm. Just like we did earlier, we'll add one position with the limb rotated forward and another where it's rotated backwards. Now I'll repeat this process for the other leg. And I'll do the same thing for the arms. Cool, that was pretty easy. Now I've done this for both legs and arms. Now that I have these states set up, I'm going to group all of my characters. Make sure you are not selecting elements from the background. And create a new game control event. Here you can see that I can choose between different movement options like walk and fly. If we select walk and go to play mode, you'll notice that our character moves, but the legs and arms are animated. To add that, we'll go to the bottom section of game controls. In behavior section, we have several options. 
on idle, on move, on jump, and on run. On idle, these are actions for when the character is standing still. On move, these are actions for when the character is walking. On jump, these are actions for the character as they jump. And on run, these are actions for the character as they run. In this case, we will apply the animation to on move so that the leg movement happens while the character is walking. I'll expand on move, then create a new transition by clicking here. In target, I'll first select the right leg. For my states, I'll select front as the first and back as the second. Let's leave the timing here at 0.25 and set it to ease and out. Again, we'll select the infinite loop and ping pong cycle. Now I'll copy and paste this transition. This time, I'll change the target to the left leg. And here, I'll adjust the order so the movements are opposite. Now the right leg moves forward first and then back while the left leg starts backwards and moves forward. And now when I go to play mode and use the keyboard keys to move the character, you'll see that not only does the character move, but the legs are also animated. And I'll do the same thing for the arms. If the right leg is moving back, the right arm should be moving forward. You can keep adding fun little movements like making the hat bounce. In this example, I added it to the on jump behavior because I only want the hat to move when the character jumps. In the first state, I kept the hat positioned on the character's head. In the second state, I moved the hat slightly higher and adjusted its rotation. I applied the same idea to the arms by creating a state where they rotate upwards, giving the impression that the character's arms go up every time they jump. This approach makes the interaction feel more dynamic and lively. And to achieve this, where wherever I click, my character walks to the click. All you have to do is enable click to move. This option is available in the game controls. And voila, it is that simple. Another way to add walking animations to your characters is by importing them already animated into Spline. Spline supports FBX, GLB, and GLTF files, including those with skeleton animation. We have a tutorial that goes more in detail about this feature, so check it out in the link in the description. And that's a wrap for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you're eager to learn more, check out our latest tutorials on our channel. And if you have a question or if you run into any issues while designing in Spline, hop into our Discord server. We're always happy to lend a hand there. See you in the next one. Bye.